In this video, I want to talk about the activation of the parasympathetic nervous system. So the parasympathetic nervous system is activated when we are under rest and digest. And that's what the parasympathetic nervous system is a lot of times referred to. This is our rest and digest mode. So this is activated most of the time, most of the day, because humans are rest and digest creatures. So let's also talk about the effects of the parasympathetic nervous system on the different effector organs. So we'll, let's start with the eyes. So our pupil, pupilla are constricted, so we're going to get pupillary constriction because there is now no need when we're under rest and just to um, collect extra light. The pupils can be uh, constricted. We're going to now have time to read a book. We're going to accommodate for near vision, not for far vision. We don't care if somebody enters the room, we're just going to be focused on our book now. And then there's no need now to collect extra oxygen. So our bronchioles are constricted, so we're going to get bronchoconstriction. There's no need to pump extra oxygen through our body, so our heart rate is nice and low also decreased AV conduction velocity. Contractility, the force, has actually very little parasympathetic input, so I'll, I left it out here. The GI tract is now, motility is increased. This is our rest and digest mode, so digest is even in the name. So now it's time to digest our meal. The sphincters are relaxed. Now we can urinate and defecate. That's now the time. Again, the urinary tract, our bladder, should contract because now it's time to urinate, urinate. So we get increased bladder smooth muscle tone and the sphincters should be relaxed. All types of secretions are turned, turned on, things like salivation, lacrimation. So all types of glandular secretions are increased. So these are the most important effects of the parasympathetic nervous system. So now let's also put in here the receptors. And I've explained in another video that we are mainly worried here about the muscarinic receptors M2 and M3 that mediate the effects on the different effector organs. Now it's very easy to know which effect is mediated by which receptor. You just have to know M2 is on the heart. So let's put it in here. M2, M2, and M3 is everywhere else. So all the other effects are mediated by M3 receptors. Also glandular secretions. The only little small font exceptions are the sphincters. I mean, if you know that smooth muscles, when once they're stimulated by M3 receptor, they're going to constricting. So we said here that the smooth muscle sphincter should actually relax. So this is not mediated by a muscarinic receptor that has, um, this is mediated by nitridergic transmission. So nitric oxide plays a role here. This is not, uh, it's, a, it's a small font thing here, but you should just realize that M3 always going to lead to smooth muscle contraction. So this can't be mediated by M3. I just want to finish up this video by talking about the autonomic control of blood vessels. So you hopefully know that blood vessels are exclusively under sympathetic control. So the sympathetic nervous system mediates our control of blood vessels. The parasympathetic nervous system, there's no tone onto blood vessels. So there's no acetylcholine released. There are ner no nerves innervating the blood vessels from the parasympathetic nervous system. However, you probably also know that there are M3 receptors found on the blood vessels. This M3 receptors are found on the smooth muscle and on the endothelial cells. So it's not really clear why they are here because there's no innervation, no nerves coming down, no acetylcholine released onto those. So it has no physiological consequences or physiological effects. However, we need to think about this M3 receptors on the blood vessels when we are thinking about drugs, because obviously, if you would say inject acetylcholine or give a muscarinic agonist, they could just go there and um, activate this receptor, we will have an effect. So I just want to finish up talking a little bit about the effects of the M3 receptors 
on, on the blood vessels because we find them in two different locations, on the smooth muscle and on the endothelial cells. So when you're activating with, let's say, injected acetylcholine, again, there's no acetylcholine physiologically around. But if you stimulate a GQ-coupled receptor, you're going to get increased calcium, which is going to lead to smooth muscle contraction. On the other hand, M3 receptors are also found on the endothelial cells. And if you activate them through with drugs, for example, with an injected acetylcholine, this is going to lead to the activation or increased synthesis of ENOs, endothelial NO synthase. And therefore, you're going to make more NO. This is a gas, which is going to lead to smooth muscle relaxation. It can diffuse around. So now what you're going to realize is that you have two opposing effects. Um, smooth muscle contraction, which is mediated by the M3 receptor on the smooth muscle, and smooth muscle relaxation, which is mediated by the M3 receptor on the endothelial cells. And so if we give drugs that activate these receptors, the relaxation is a dominant effect. So you have just to know that there's no way to, can, to be able to predict that. There are two opposing effects, and one is a winner. It's a smooth muscle relaxation. So again, under physiological conditions, there is no effect of the parasympathetic nervous system on blood vessel. This only comes up if you were going to start thinking about drugs. This concludes a video on the activation of the parasympathetic nervous system.